So my name is Brenda Gazar. Um, I'm a, a general assignment reporter for the Los Angeles Daily News. Um, and I've been working here at the Daily News for three years. And before that, I worked at the Pasadena Star News, which is our sister newspaper. Um, and we're part of a, a big chain of papers um, called the Southern California News Group, um, or cluster, I should say, a cluster of papers called the Southern California News Group, which I believe now has 13 newspapers, um, including the Orange County Register and the Riverside Press Enterprise and the Long Beach Press Telegram and the San Bernardino Sun, et cetera, et cetera. And um, I have been a journalist now for 15 years, um, and I've been lucky enough to have worked uh, in, uh, in a few different countries. Um, I worked uh, in Egypt for six months in 2000, and I lived and worked in Israel as a journalist from uh, 2005 to 2009, uh, covering everything from women's issues to the peace process, um, and to race, uh, religion, and ethnicity issues, and that was uh, that was a great experience for me. Um, but it's also nice to be back. Uh, I grew up uh, in Southern California in a small town called Barstow. Um, so living in LA, living in the big city, is a bit of a change. Um, but I uh, I'm happy to happy to live here and happy to be working in such a dynamic and interesting um, community. And city. When I lived in Egypt, I was struck by how important uh, religion is uh, in that part of the world. So, you know, you would talk to somebody and maybe the second question they would ask you, well, first question is, where are you from? Second question is, what religion are you? Uh, you sometimes, a lot of times. So religion is a big deal over there. And, and here you might have a friend, you know, for months or, or even years, and religion may never come up as a question. Um, so, yeah, I guess what was interesting to me was just how important religion is, um, you know, for, for people of the Middle East. Um, also, I was struck by the hospitality of, um, of many people and how welcoming they were um, generally to me. Uh, there was some tension when I was there in Egypt in 2000 um, because it was during the time of the Second Intifada or Palestinian Uprising uh, going on, um, and so there was some tension there for a while. They were burning American flags, uh, but for the most part, um, people were were very welcoming and uh, and wanted to wanted to hear about the United States and uh, my country. and And they are more politically oriented, uh, I think, than many Americans are. They pay attention to what's going on in the world. At least I'd say, at least the educated people pay attention. Um, and then what also struck me was just the dire poverty uh, when I was there in Egypt. There, you know, we, we definitely have poverty here in the United States, and we have homelessness and, and all those issues. But um, there was a lot of poverty in, in Cairo, um, astonishing poverty. And that, was, um, and that just made me grateful, I think, for what I have um, here. And then, yeah, and then in Israel also, the super political – um, every half hour you're on a bus uh, or you're listening to the radio, every half hour they have a news update about what's happening. And yeah, and so, and what's interesting is even the kids take an interest in kind of the politics. And, you know, you could walk down the street and like hear 12 year olds talking about, you know, the prime minister, Bibi Netanyahu, or, um, you know, or what's happening, uh, I don't know, in, in the parliament that day. And it's just so odd to see such young people take an interest. But, you know, um, a lot of, there, you know, Israel, uh, a lot of, there's a lot happening in Israel all the time and um, with its government and, uh, you know, with a peace process or lack of peace process. And so people take, take an interest um, and it, it, it does occupy a central part of their lives where here, you know, you can... You can go, you can not discuss politics. Uh, politics may not be a central part of your life, or it isn't for many people. I think now with the election, the upcoming presidential election, politics is taking a much more central part in people's lives than it ever has, um, or, you know, than it often does. So that's different, but still, it's, it's not the same. They have it, and, and when somebody dies, in a, for example, when somebody dies either in the army or in a terror attack, it's such a small country that people feel it. Um, you know, the whole country grieves, the whole country mourns, um, because chances are 
you know somebody that knows somebody that is related to that person because it is a small country. Brenda, my name is Lyndon. I am from Austin, Texas, United States. Welcome to this wonderful group here. This is a group filled with, uh, I would say, 90 plus percent of people with visual issues, as well as some other uh, disabilities are represented here, or shall I call them inconveniences. Um, you are an interesting person, someone I would uh, certainly consider to be uh, uh, someone who has made their way into places and into situations that some of us would wonder about and feel uh, a bit unsafe or a bit not able to deal with the situations that you have found yourself in. What was your assignments while you were in uh, Israel? Did you deal with the politics directly, or were you more doing social sort of uh, reports? And what was it like for you in terms of your encounters with, say, for example, people who were... Um, who were on the front lines of the Israel-Palestinian conflict. Did you see the open hostilities that we here in America are led to believe existed uh, in, uh, or still exist in those places? Or were you able to see the more blending, the more tolerant nature of what I would hope is actually more true um, or is this something which is even more exasperated? It is my analysis, uh, amateur at best, that this situation is a lot more complicated than we in America are led to believe, and we cannot understand the subtleties of that complication because we don't live it. It would be like people in Illinois being upset and, and wanting uh, to take territory from a neighboring state, Iowa, or be like people from Texas wanting to absorb o Oklahoma or something like that and make it part of Texas. That would be a uh, that would be akin to what it would be like if I understand it correctly. But that's not going to happen. And these are issues which. I have heard are much more complicated, much more subtle in nature than we are led to believe. What would be your comments on that? Hi, Brenda. My name is Cindy. I also live in Southern California, born and raised in the Inland Empire in San Bernardino County. I love reading The San Bernardino Sun and The Daily Bulletin. I'd like to welcome you to this app, and feel free to roam about and ask whatever you'd like. We are a very open community, and I look forward to hearing more from you. Hi, um, I'm Nusselinus. That's not my real name. Um, it's a wordplay on my real name, though, but it's not my real name, obviously. <laughs> um, that was interesting to hear you talk about your work. Um, I think it must be a really interesting job to be a journalist. Um, I've always thought so. I'm in the, I am studying IT and cognition. Uh, so it's basically a mix of data science and cognitive science, um, or computer science, if you will. Um, <clears throat> so I'm a little bit more of a nerd, I guess. Um, I thought it was interesting to hear what you said about religion. I'm from Denmark, where religion isn't considered to be playing a large role in the lives of the individuals. I think the last statistics I heard, one third considers themselves Christian. Um, and it's paradoxically, uh, one of the reasons for this um, is that Denmark does Denmark has an official stage religion, and it, it actually, the fact that it has a stage religion, 
I think plays into why it's not of any particular importance because there is a more sort of free free market attitude in the US um so uh religion goes into the the private or the individual's life and uh, your personal sphere where in in Denmark it's this entity um and I'm an atheist and I'm not subscribed to the state church. But I think it's, is it 23% that's not members of the state church? I don't know to which extent um, these are the same people that are necessarily saying that they're atheists or whether they're in other religions. Uh, so I, I don't know how much this number makes sense, but most people in Denmark are members of the state church just because it's this, it's, it's what you do. It's just how it is. Um, and I was, and I unsubscribed later in life. Um, so religion here is this more, even if there is, there is a politicians play, uh, they can use religious argumentation the same way that you can do in the U.S., you know. Um, um, even if there is a... I, I think maybe the fact that there is no uh, formal secularism um, kind of... Uh, places some restrictions to the degree that Danes are willing to talk about religion and politics together because we consider them informally separate entities. And I guess in Egypt you have the other end of the spectrum where uh, the same sort of non-secularism uh, has a completely different form. Um, and politics and religion is or ideology and religion is kind of the the same thing. I'm I'm not actually familiar with the the govern the way that Egypt in particular is governed. Um but that is what I would assume. Um so that's that's interesting how with the difference in the roles of religion there. Anyway, I don't want to go into a huge rent. Uh, well, I think I have already. Um, so I'm going to stop now, but um, thanks for posting. Hey, Brenda. Patrick here. Wow, I loved hearing your stories about Israel and Egypt. I have never been to either place, and I would love to. Seems a little bit scary to go there now, of course, but... I think I would still do it. Um, so do you know the languages? Do you know Israeli? Um, or I'm not sure what language or languages they speak in Egyptian. I mean, in Egypt. Is it? It's not called Egyptian, is it? <laughs> I don't think so. Um, yeah, just curious. But wow, but they those stories fascinated me. And that must have been kind of scary also for you to be there burning American flags and such and wondering from day to day, you know, how safe you are, but because you could, yeah, they can get kind of wild there, but yeah, anyway, um, great to hear your story and um, just, as I said, just really interested in what you spoke about being in, especially Israel, because I always wanted to go there. Um, but anyway, yeah, thank you so much, and nice nice hearing what you're all about. Welcome, Brenda, to the big city, from Boston to Los Angeles, via Egypt and Israel. A very interesting story. Enjoyed listening to you, and would enjoy talking to you some more especially about Israel and the Palestinians. Uh, other than that, let's see, I'm a fellow uh, 
Los Angeles site. I'm living in the San Fernando Valley, and I've visited, I was Boston, but I uh, haven't really lived in a rural community, a lot of farmlands, and uh, I have mixed feelings. Uh, of course, I am very familiar with the Daily News, and remember when it used to be the Valley newspaper, and it was, I think, the Green Sheet, and that's kind of putting, aging myself a little. So anyway, uh, I look forward to see, seeing more of your posts and getting to know you. Thank you. Bye. It's really interesting. A really interesting insight. Um, yeah, especially, yeah, the stuff overseas and stuff. It's interesting that um, <clears throat> even, like, the children are more political. Um, yeah, I know you kind of have half answered it, but I wonder why that is. Um, yeah, perhaps it's because of, um, I guess the, uh, especially in Egypt, um, over the last five or so years, I guess the instability would, um, probably make people educate themselves, but I guess it would, it would have to alienate some of them as well, because some of them would be probably just sick of all the, um, stuff that's going on. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really interesting. I wonder if like their education system covers that better or something, but yeah, welcome to the app and stuff. And yeah. Well, Hey Brenda, it's Anthony from Pennsylvania. I just wanted to welcome you to Varel and, um, nice introduction. And, and, uh, thank you for sharing a little bit about yourself with us. Um, guys and girls on here and um, looking forward to your many posts on the app so uh, again welcome and uh, feel free to ask any questions or anything you're curious to want to know take care and God bless hi Brenda welcome to Voreo I really enjoyed your story, and I enjoyed hearing about your ventures and insights overseas. I also found it interesting about the children being so interested in, in politics and everything. That's, that's quite an observation there and quite an interesting thing. Um, I've done some travel overseas, but I love to hear about other cultures and what people are doing and stuff. So, welcome. Good evening, Brenda. It's Chris, and I am in from Anaheim. Born and raised in Southern California. Grew up in Riverside. Moved out to Orange County in 2003. So, that was a nice introduction. It was interesting to hear about your experiences in both Israel and Egypt. So look forward to hearing some more, and feel free to ask any questions you'd like. As Cindy said, we're a very open community here, and welcome to Vorel. Well, hello, Brenda. Um, I am from Nashville, Tennessee, and I found your post quite interesting. Um, just a couple of comments, though. Um, about uh, the Egyptian poverty, I wonder if in Egypt they paid more attention to trying to wipe out poverty, trying to deal with it, or did they just accept it as being what it is, like we seem to do now here in the United States, whereas uh, when I was growing up as a child, this country was interested in wiping out poverty now, politically and otherwise, we're interested in bettering the middle class, but not the poor, necessarily. Um, was that the way it was in Egypt? And uh, also, um, Israel. Uh, yes, interesting, of course. 
but I'm not sure <clears throat> of who they are really, so I don't really have much to say on that subject. I have met some people from that part of the world, and they truly are fascinating, well, no more fascinating than any other people I've met from any other country. But over here in the U.S., we seem to place a special value on those people for some reason. I'm not really sure why. But um, the other thing I was going to say is that uh, you uh, sound like a very interesting person. It would be really nice if you would tell us out here more about your likes and dislikes and how long have you been working for the paper? You may have stated that and I missed it. Um, and some of your other ex experiences here in the United States. Um, and it is good to meet you. Thank you for your post and God bless you. Hi, Brenda. It was really interesting to hear your introduction and your experiences in Israel and your work for the Los Angeles Daily News. Um, I'm from the UK, all the way across the big pond, so it's really interesting to hear what's going on over there and also in all other parts of the world too. Um, so lovely to hear from you and look forward to hearing from you again with more interesting posts. Oh wow, you've got a great reporter voice. <laughs> And I look forward to hearing news items from you. Um, yeah, I can totally relate um, in terms of certain countries being more politically orientated and religious. Um, I would consider my country here to be um, quite a religious country, even though we are quite multicultured. But yeah, great to hear your, your report. Hi, Brenda. I'm wondering if the reason that people in Israel, for example, are more interested in politics, um, is that the news in Israel is actually more news, whereas the news in America, a large part of it, especially the television, and more specifically the cable television news, is extraordinarily slanted one way or the other. So I'm wondering if you think that the news in um, Israel and other places is more balanced than it is in America, uh, more traditional news, shall we say, and if that has something to do with why the people have more interest in it. They are able to have more trust in the media than Americans can have because most Americans know that a lot of the news uh, is very much propaganda here in America, especially um, the cable television news, which is becoming, well, and social media as well, which is, and both of those are becoming much uh, more dominant vehicles for people to get their news here in America. Hello, Brenda. I just wanted to say welcome to Varel and thank you so much for sharing. I agree that it is very important um, for people to be involved and it's fascinating uh, what you were saying about um, visiting other places where people are more greatly affected and responsive and young people are very conversant in um, politics and uh, I just I find the whole thing very fascinating and um, I just wanted to say welcome to Varel.